The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Learners, you are welcome to this revision lesson, this revision session. I am Stella Ndombu and will be revising <coughs> with Premier Bilen. In probatoire Bilen, it, based, it is based on handicraft. So our revision will be based on handicraft. Let's have a recap of what we will be doing. The first thing we'll look at the structure of the exams. It's very important. So that before you get into the examination room, you should know what you are expecting to see. Secondly, we'll look at sculpting a wooden mask and drawing and painting a portrait which is the main thing we are going to be looking at, the content of our revision. Sculpt, sculpturing a wooden mask. Let's see how we'll treat this lesson. We'll look at the definition of concept, materials and tools of sculpturing, types of sculptures, process of sculpturing, shaping a wooden mask, care for wooden carvings, and the importance of sculpturing. This is all what we are going to be seeing under sculpturing. Let's look at the objective of this revision lesson. The objective of this lesson is to test learners on the general understanding of manual labor as a subject. Secondly, to test the competency in drawing and describing processes of producing objects. And finally, to give candidates an opportunity to express themselves in English in a co-curricular activity. Before we continue, we'll look at the format. That is the exam, the examination structure. The probatoire manual level for bilingual classes is structured in this way. It has, the, it has three main sections. You have section one, which evaluates resources. The evaluation of resources carries 10 marks. It is 50% of the exam. And it is subdivided into two parts. You have A and B. Section A, section 1A evaluates knowledge and it carries four marks. Section two, section 1B evaluates know-how and it carries six marks. We move to section two. Section two deals with the evaluation of competencies, and it usually goes with entrances through real life situation. That's a short text, which you'll be, you, you'll be expected to read and be able to use it, apply it, and solve I mean, problems. 
And then secondly, you have two tasks which will be given you to use the real life situation and solve the task. Section three is mainly for the examiners. But it is important for you learners to know this because in the course of writing, you should take note, you should be able to focus on this point. Section three is 10% of the exams and it carries two marks. So the examiner in the course of the exam looks at the relevance. It looks at coherence, it looks at neatness, good English, clarity and handwriting. So students, you are expected that when you are writing this exam, you should take note of this. Write well, express yourself well in good English. Your handwriting should be good. You should write clearly and you should be coherent in whatever you are writing. Okay, let us look at the structure of the examination. That is probatoire, bilen, manual level. How is this paper structured? The paper is based on the domain of handicraft. It is a coefficient one subject and it has just one paper. It is written in English language and it has a total of 20 marks. This paper is written for one hour. Okay, we move to, well, learners, before we continue with, the, with the, the revision, I want us to do a summary of all what you have been doing, in, uh, of all what you have been doing in manual level up to this point. We will first of all look at the definition of some concepts. First, we'll look at sculpturing. What is sculpturing? Sculpturing is the act of marking forms and shapes. Forms and figures, please. We move to shaping. What is shaping? Shaping is the act of giving a particular shape or form to something. The next thing is carving. Carving means to cut solid materials into patterns or designs. We continue with sculptor or sculpturist. A sculptor or a sculpturist is that person who makes sculptures. Okay, we proceed with the types of sculptures. Remember it is a revision. So we are just summarizing all the work you have been doing right up to this point. Types of sculptures. There are four main types of sculptures. You have a low relief sculpture. You have the low relief sculpture. You can see it. And a low relief sculpture is that sculpture that uh, the, the designs are just flat. They are just slightly raised above the background, as you can see the picture in front of you. You have a high relief sculpture look at this sculpture it is quite different from what we have from the low relief sculpture that is why we call it a high relief sculpture because it is higher very higher than the is far more higher than the background so you can see it it projects above the its circumference okay we continue with the types of sculptures we have engraving Engraving is, is when you incise, the, or the, the act of incising designs on a flat surface. You can see it in front of you. It has been, this, this, this flat surface has been engraved. You can see the design that has been engraved on it. We move to the last, type of sculpture, which is a freestanding sculpture. Some people will call it stand alone. As you can see it, 
It is standing on its own. It has no background. And with a free standing sculpture, you can see it from all directions, which means you can go around it and you can clearly see it from all directions. Okay, let's continue with the materials. That is materials used for sculpting. You have wood, you have rocks and stones. We have chips, we have bones, we have guard, we have ice, ivory, gold, bronze, vegetables. These are all materials that we can use to sculpt objects, whatever we want to sculpt. Okay, let's look at the tools for sculpting. One, you have the chisel, we have the wooden mallet, we have the scale and pencils. You need it because at times you need to weigh the material you want to use to know the quantity or the, the, to know the quantity you want to use. You need a pencil because at times you need to, to outline, to draw the outline, to come up with an outline of, of your design. You need a knife. You need a cutter. You need a, a rotor machine. And you need wax and hammer. You also have examples of objects that can be sculpted. We have objects like wooden mask, we have mortar, you have clay pots, you have portraits, you have fruits, you have uh, spatulas, you have animals. Those are things that you can sculpt. Now let's see the techniques of sculpting. You have four main techniques of sculpting. You have engraving, shaping, molding, melting down. These are all techniques that you must have seen during your studies. We go to the uses of a wooden mask. Remember our lesson, the first part of our revision is on sculpting a wooden mask. So let us look at why what are the uses of a wooden mask? You shouldn't be sculpting something you don't have any use for. A wooden mask can be used for decoration. A wooden mask can be used to disguise. You put it on your face and to, to, to disguise. You can also use it to protect your face. You can use a wooden mask for entertainment, especially during traditional dances. You can also use a wooden mask for commercial purpose. You can make your wooden mask, you sell it, that is for commerce. A wooden mask can also be used as a traditional symbol, a traditional symbol of power in some palaces. And a wooden mask is also a touristic artifact. Okay, let's look at the process of sculpting a wooden mask. <coughs> you just follow, looking at the diagram we have. This is a summary on sculpting a wooden mask. The first thing we have to do is to select a wood. You have wood selection and cutting. So you need to decide which kind of wood you want to use. You choose the wood, you, and the best wood should be the soft wood for, for, for sculpting. You choose your wood, you cut it to the desired size, depending on what you want to sculpt. So your cutting or the size of the wood will be in accordance to what you want to sculpt. Then now, from here, the next thing you should do is to outline your designs. So the next part is outline outlines of designs marked on the wooden surface. So you need a pencil to mark 
your design, to draw out your design on the wood you will be sculpting. And then you move to rough carving done manually with, with basic tools. This is the next thing you should do. You have your basic tools. You need a chisel with a hammer. So do rough carving on the wood. And then after that, you go into detail carving. You go into detail carving. Detail carving means you bring it out now in the form, in the way you are supposed to, in the way you envisage that your sculpture should look like. That is detail carving. And then after your detail carving, you need to move, do the last part of it, which is to apply oil, oil on the product, on the wooden mask. The oil is the, the oil paint. It can be oil paint or it can be varnish. But first of all, you apply the varnish. Even if you have to add any other paints there, you apply varnish first to you apply the varnish first. And before you apply varnish, you must have used a sandpaper to smoothen the surface of the wood. And then you apply your varnish. And then if you want to add a paint, good for you. Okay, we'll continue with, we'll continue with the lesson, which is the next but we'll be looking at caring for a wooden mask. After you have sculpted your wooden mask or you have carved your wooden mask, you have done everything and it looks beautiful. How do you keep it? How do you care for it? First, you need to apply lacquer. That is varnish. Each time you apply varnish, you realize that your sculpture is shining. It's very clean. So always apply lacquer each time you realize that your, the, the sculpture is changing color or is becoming a little dark, you apply lacquer. Then you keep your carving in a moist area. Protect the carving from excessive sunlight because excessive sunlight can cause cracks on the wood. And then you oil your carving occasionally if it appears dry oil it that is varnish you use varnish to oil it each time you realize that it is looking dry then make sure you always dust always dust your your sculpture using a soft it could be a soft cloth or a soft sponge so that it doesn't um, cause scratches on the sculpture. Each time you realize it is dusty, you just need to dust it. And then the next point is you should always use, use only wood free from insects and, fung and fungus as, and rot. Use only wood that is free from insects fungus and rot, meaning that your wood should be that wood that can resist penetration of insects and it should not easily get rot. And the last point here is that we should cover your, 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 your sculpture with plastic tap. You cover it with a plastic tab to prevent it to prevent dust. You can cover it to prevent dust. You can cover it to protect, to protect it, especially if you have to move about with it. Make sure you cover it very well. <laughs> okay, let's continue with the importance of sculpting. Sculpting is a very important artwork because it develops hand-eye coordination. The more you cough, the more you become concentrated, the movement of your hands, you move your hands with your, together with your eyes, it develops that coordination. And then you look at, the second point is, 
Sculpting is very important because it also helps to develop different areas of the brain. For example, the ability to focus, as I said, and to pay attention, especially when we are dealing with children. Now, the next importance is that it, develop, it leads to the development of skills and career. The more often you do you sculpt, the more you become an expert in it, and the more you build, you can build a career from that. The next point is sculpting makes everyday tasks easy. Yes, the more you do it, the more you become flexible and it becomes easy for you. Movement is easy for you. And the next point is that sculpting serves as a source of income, as a source of employment and it also increases trade. As a source of income, when you sculpt your objects, you can take them to the market, you can market them, you can sell them. As a source of employment, you can uh, take sculpting as a profession. So you, um, you become self-employed with sculpting. And it also increases trade, meaning that as you sell, or as you produce the, sculpt, the, 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 the sculptures, it adds to trade, it adds to the, 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 the nation's or the country's trade. Okay, let's, the last point here is that sculpting helps in relaxation and it is also a form of uh, uh, relaxation and satisfaction. So sculpting is a form of relaxation. There are many people when they're stressed up, they just need to sculpt one or two objects or just sculpt, just engage themselves in sculpting and they relax their mind, they relax their brains. And after sculpting, you look at what you have sculpted and you are so satisfied with what you have done, with the work you have done with your hand. Okay. We have come, we, we will move now directly to the revision. And the revision will, you will see, the revision will appear in the same way as the structure or the structure, the format of the exam paper looks like. We have revision questions on section one. So section 1A, the first question there is, choose the correct answer from the list below. An artist who makes sculptures is called an artist who makes sculpture is called the answer is sculptor. <clears throat> so you had three answers there. You have sculptor, you have artist, you have potter. And so the answer there is sculptor. And remember, we have another name for a sculptor is a sculpturist. So you either call it a sculptor or a sculpturist. But according to the equation, you answer according to the question that has been posed. There we have sculptor. So your answer is sculptor. We move to the next question. Question two. State the difference between sculpture and carving. One mark. Sculpturing is the art of making forms and figures, while carving is the art of fashioning or producing objects by cutting or shaping solid materials. This is the main difference we have between sculpting and between sculpting and carving. So we say one mark. The next question is, two main materials used in sculpting wooden, wooden mask include, what we are saying here is, two main materials that are used in sculpting. It could be any of the materials. The answer there is, you can either say wood, you say rocks, you say stone, cheap, bone, gout, ice, ivory, gold, bronze, vegetables. So any of these can be used to in sculpting. 
Name two objects that can be carved. That's question four. Question four, name two objects that can be carved. It's one mark. The answer is you can carve or sculpt a wooden mask, a mortar, clay pot, portrait, fruits, spatulas, animals. Those are objects. Question five, one mark. Which is the best type of wood for, which is the best type of wood for, carv for carving or for sculpting? The answer is soft wood. So when you give the answer soft wood, you have one mark. Then question six. Answer true or false. Disguise, decoration, and entertainment are uses of wooden mask. True or false? The answer is true. These are all using or uses of a face mask. Okay, so. I want us to take note that in this first part, these are all questions that can be asked in section, uh, in section 1A. These are all possible questions that you can find in section 1A of the paper Manual Labor Probatoire Bilen. And you will have at least two or three of such questions. So I have just given up to six to to, to, to broaden your, your mind. Let's move to section 1B. These are the possible kind of questions that you can find on the paper in section 1B. It always begins, uh, it, it, it is, we, here we are ev evaluating know-how. Okay, question seven, draw a wooden mask. This question usually carries four marks. So section 1B, the question, the first question is usually on drawing. You can be asked to draw any other object, but here we are dealing with the, with a wooden mask. So draw a wooden mask. That is the first question. So you can see a wooden mask. You can draw something like this can draw something like this. And the next question is, describe your drawing. So most often, when you draw, be expecting to describe what you have drawn. And this is to enable you express yourself in English. Remember, we said this is one of the things we are testing you on. Describe your drawing. So when I look at my drawing in front of me, I can see I can describe this wooden mask in this way. This is a mask made of wood. It is flat with carved eyes, mouth, and nose. It is painted brown with a black rope tied on both sides. On both sides. It looks like a human face. Okay. You see this all what I have said, if you look on this picture, you will see everything that, that I have said in my description. So your description should be what you can see on the drawing. Okay, revision question, question uh, section two. This is section two of the manual label paper. It always starts with a real life situation, which is a very short text. A friend, let us read together. A friend invites you to their annual cultural festival in Fumban. During their traditional dance presentations, you got attracted to the wooden mask the dancers had on. You want to have a souvenir of it 
but it is not on sale. You decide to sculpt one for your for your for souvenir. Let us read to you. Remember, you'll be expecting to answer questions on the real life situation. So make sure you read it well. I want us to go over it again. A friend invites you to their annual cultural festival in Fumba. During their traditional dance presentation, you got attracted to the wooden mask the dancers had on. You want to have a souvenir of it, but it is not on sale. You decide to sculpt one for your for souvenir. Okay, these are the possible questions that can be asked after a real life situation like this. Describe the stages you will use to sculpt the wooden mask. Five marks. Describe the stages you will use to sculpt the wooden mask. You have decided to sculpt a wooden mask for souvenir. So how will you sculpt it? In other words, how will you sculpt the wooden mask? Okay, this is what you are expected to, to write. Select the wood and basic tools to be used. So you must assemble your wood, you, uh, you select your wood, you assemble the basic tools you need to use. The next step is to cut the wood using a saw. When you get the wood, you have to cut it to the size that you want. And then the next step is to outline the design, the form of and volume. So you need to, you need to have an idea on the volume of the wood you want to use, the form of the wood you want to use, and then the, the design you want to sculpt. And then the next step is for you to mark on the wooden surface. So when you have conceived the design, the forms, and the volume, you need to mark the design on the wooden surface. The next step is for you to carve. You do rough carving with a manual, with manual tools, uh, manually. Do your rough carving manually with basic tools like hammer and chisel. And then you do detailed carving and scraping. This is to bring out to bring out the form or the design you actually uh, you actually want to, you actually want. Then smoothen the surface of the mass with sandpaper. So you use a sandpaper to smoothen the wood, and then you apply varnish or paint, oil paint, on the wooden mask. Finally, you dry the mask under the sun. Remember we said you don't leave it in direct sunlight. So when drying, you should know where to position your mask. It shouldn't be directly under the sun. Okay. So when you give all of this explanation, you have five marks. Let's move to the next question. How will you care for the wooden mask? So in this section two of the, of the paper, you should be expecting to tell us how you will fabricate or how you will, you, you will do any of the art activity like we are dealing with sculpting. How will you sculpt? And now we are asking how will you care for the wooden mask? Which is two marks. To care for the wooden mask, you have to apply varnish. You have to keep the carving in a moist area. You have to protect the carving from excessive sunlight. You have to oil the carving occasionally each time you discover it appears dry. You always dust with soft brush or soft sponge. You cover it with plastic and uh, question 10 state two importance of sculpture 
sumas. State two importance of sculpture. Two max. Sculpture, uh, sculpt, sculpting develops hand eye coordination. It helps to develop different areas of the brain. Sculpting leads to the development of skills and career. It, so, it is a source of income. It is a source of employment. It, is, it increases trade. It is a means of relaxation and satisfaction. So you are expected to give any two of these to earn two marks. Okay, so with this section two, we have come to the end of revision in section two. So with section two, you mostly have two questions. So it can either be on the, 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 the description, you, on the importance and whatever, but remember you have at least two questions. Section three deals with presentation how you present your, 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 your work, how you present your work. The relevant, that's the material you write should be relevant. It should be, it should be relevant to the question that you have been asked. It should be coherent. Whatever you are writing should be coherent. And your work should be clear. It should be neat. You should have Handwriting, good handwriting, that is clear, that everybody can see, that anybody can see. Any person marking your paper can be able to understand what you are writing or see whatever you have written. And finally, you should, your work should carry good English. You should write in good English. That is why it is a, a bilingual, it is a bilingual subject. It is a subject for bilingual um, uh, for bilingual learners. So they write in English and your English should be perfect. We have come to the end of revision one, which is sculpting. We move directly into revision two, which is drawing and painting portraits with oil paint. Revision two, drawing and painting portrait with oil paint. This is how we look at this topic. We we'll first of all have a summary, just like what we did in sculpting. And the summary will contain this. We have notions, that's definition of some notions in drawing and painting. We have um, materials and tools used in drawing for drawing and painting. We have process of sketching and drawing a portrait. We have purpose of drawing a portrait. We, we have caring for a portrait. And finally, the importance of drawing and painting. I believe, and I, I believe that at this point in time, we must have done all of this in our studies right up to this point in time. We move to definition, tools and the first thing we'll be looking at is sketching. Sketching is a freehand drawing that focuses on capturing the essence rather than, rather than going into details. Sketching captures more of the essence rather than going into details. Drawing. Drawing is a slow and more careful, a slow, more careful and more detailed expression. So you sketch before you draw. The next thing we we'll look at is portrait. What is a portrait? It is an artistic representation in which a person's face and its expressions are predominant. And then we look at what is a good portrait. So you have portrait, you have what a good portrait. A good portrait is that one that says something about a person. 
You can be saying that maybe the person is sad. When you look at it, you can depict that the person is, is happy or the person is sad. It must say something about the person. Let's look at the materials for drawing and painting. One, you have paint, you have the canvas, you have paper, you have frame, you have ink. These are some of the materials for drawing. And then let's look at the tools. You have drawing board, you have pencils, you have sketchbooks, you have drawing surfaces, you have erasers, you have sharpeners, pens, and paint brush. I want us to make a difference here. Take note of this. When you are asked of materials, just think of that thing that you will still find it on your object at the end of it. Anything that you will that would take you right up to the end of your of your, of the object you are producing or the drawing. It could be a drawing, it could be a sculpting, it could be a sculpture, it could be whatever. But at the end of it, you should be able to see that thing. For example, if you look at drawing, um, uh, if you look at the materials, you have paint. If you are doing drawing and painting, at the end of it, you will see that you will paint and the paint will remain on the drawing. So you see it at the finish, at the end of your work. But when you come to the tools, the tools are those things that will help you to reach the final stage. You might not necessarily see them at the end of the work, but you use them, they help you to get the work done. So you have a drawing board. You need a drawing board, but after you have drawn, you will not see that drawing board. You have a drawing, but you will not see the drawing board. You have your pencil, you have your sketchbook, you have drawing surfaces, you have erasers, you have sharpeners, you have pens, you have paint brush. You will not see a paint brush after you have drawn. So look, this is a very simple way to distinguish between materials and tools. Okay, let's proceed with the types of sketches. There are three main types. You have croquis, you have portraits, you have portraits. These are the types of these are the types of let's move to the forms of portraits. Portraits, the forms of portrait you have painting, you have photographs, you have sculpture. So these are the three ways when we talk of forms of portraits. These are the three ways we can have a portrait. You can produce a portrait by painting, drawing and painting it. You can have a portrait by using a camera to snap. That is why we talk of photograph. It could be a photograph that you have just used a camera. You can have a portrait by, sculpt, uh, by sculpting. So you can sculpt out a portrait. Let's continue with the process of sketching and drawing a portrait. The first thing you should do is to assemble your materials and tools. You assemble the materials and tools. We have already seen all the materials and tools that you we need. You put them on one spot so that when you start your work, you don't need to rush uh, uh, left and right to get whatever. Put them all on the spot. And then you sketch on a paper. Remember, you have to sketch first on a paper. After sketching on a paper, you mix your paint. You can use a paint board, you mix your paint. It depends on which kind of paint you want to use. Mix whatever, whichever paint you want to use, whichever color you want to use. You mix it and keep it. And then, after which you transfer your sketch or the drawing on a canvas. Before you transfer on a canvas, no, you need to set up, you need to set up the canvas. You set the canvas on an easel. You need a, you put, put it on the easel where you be able to draw in a very relaxed and um, easy manner. Then after transferring your work on a canvas, Remember, you have now moved from a paper 
you have moved the work to a canvas. After your drawing, you tone the complexion. We are looking at a portrait. You tone the complexion, try to emphasize where there are wrinkles, where you have lines, whatever, maybe they, 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 you, you tone it to, 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 to bring out the face or the portrait you want to portray. And then you decorate the skin of the face. The skin, how do you decorate the skin of the face? You can look at maybe if it is a female face, maybe they want to paint the lips. Maybe you want to paint the eyes. You want to decorate the eyebrows and so on. So you decorate the face using right colors. Then you move to the next point, which is you paint per plan of the face. Now, before you start drawing, you must have you must have a vision of what you want to draw. You must know what exactly you want to draw. So when you reach this stage, after toning and decorating the face, you paint again the second time so that it comes out the real, a real face according to what you had in mind. And then, after which, you enlighten the shadows to mark the reliefs, all the reliefs on the face. Okay, we continue with the purpose of drawing a portrait. Why should you draw a portrait? Some people will draw a portrait by likeness. You just want to draw somebody's portrait. You want to display, you, you want to, 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 to display a personality. You bring out the personality, you want to bring out the personality of somebody. And then you want to bring out the mood of a person. Those are some of the reasons or some of the things that can push you to draw a portrait. The mood of a person, the person can be, maybe the person is sad, maybe the person is miserable, maybe the person is um, happy. Now, after producing your portrait, how do you care for it? It is important for you to know how to care for any object that you produce. Because before you produce an object, it must be very important to you. So after production, you don't keep it carelessly. So, in the case of a portrait, when you decide to produce a portrait, how do you care for it? When you keep the portrait or in the cabin in a cool, dry area, you protect the portrait from excessive sunlight. You dust, both, uh, you dust the portrait, you cover with plastic, tap, or fabric, and you avoid water from touching it. Let's look at the importance of drawing and painting. Importance of drawing and painting. The art of drawing and painting, which is fine art, is very important because it develops hand-eye coordination. It helps to stimulate creative thoughts. An artist is always thinking, how can I modify this? How can I bring out, what can I add? What can I, they are very creative. They have a creative mind. The more you get into the art of drawing and painting, the more you develop a creative, um, you develop creative thoughts. Also, drawing and painting is very important because it increases observational skills. Yes, it increases observational skills. A paint, uh, uh, an artist who is based in drawing and painting 
will not walk with the eyes closed, will be very observant because whatever he says, he is able to make, he is able to make something out of it and that increases his art, his art work and improve on his skills. So, we move to the next point. Drawing and painting develops visual artwork, ideas in all mediums. It develops visual artwork ideas in all mediums. So wherever you find yourself, whether it's an, in an occasion, in a funeral ceremony, in a wedding, in wherever, an artist is always thinking of which artwork can he bring out from this. The next point is drawing and painting helps to in, to include it helps learners to write and think creatively. So you don't just write for writing's sake. Something must be pushing you. Something must be pushing you to draw whatever you are drawing. Something must be pushing you to write whatever you want to write on, 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 the, on the work or on the painting you have produced. Because most paintings usually do carry messages. So it increases, it helps you to write and think creatively. Drawing and painting also serve as a source of income. Your paintings can be can be sold, they can be marketed. Your paintings, you can you can you can sell them and you will earn income. It is a source of employment. So drawing and painting, there are many good art uh, many good artists who are based in drawing and painting. They paint good, good, they come out with very good paintings, and these paintings they can go viral. Drawing and painting also increases trade. So the paintings you produce is, is, a, is an object for trade. So it increases trade. You sell them and you can even, you can even export. They export paintings. Okay, the last thing is relaxation and satisfaction. Any artist, after a good production, is very satisfied. Any artist, whenever they are stressed, that is what relieves them of, of their stress. So they use it as a form of relaxation and a form of satisfaction because after that, they become so satisfied with what they have produced. Or even when they are stressed and they want to use it as a form of relaxation, it, uh, it gives them some satisfaction. The cause of doing that work gives them some satisfaction. Okay, we have come to the end of the summary of revision two. We move now to the revision questions on drawing and paint, uh, drawing a portrait. We follow the same format, section one. It carries 10 marks, 50% of the exam. In section one, we have, which is divided into, which is subdivided into two, section 1a and section 1b. Section 1a, which evaluates the knowledge. These are some of the questions you can find in this section. Differentiate between drawing and sketching, two marks. Differentiate between drawing and sketching. Two marks. Sketching is if the answer. Let's look at the answer, please. Sketching is a freehand drawing that focuses on capturing the essence rather than going into details. So with sketching, you don't go into details. While drawing is a slow, more careful, and more detailed expression. So when you give this, you have two two marks. The next question, question two, paint.
canvas, erasers, sharpeners, sketchbooks, and colors. The above list contain three materials and three tools for drawing and painting a portrait. I then, okay, let's take the question again. This is a list, paint, canvas, erasers, sharpeners, sketchbook, and color. The above list contain three materials and three tools for drawing and painting a portrait. Now the task you have here, identify the materials and the tools, two marks. So you look at the list and you bring out the materials and you bring out the tools for two marks. So the materials we have on that list include paint, canvas, color. The tools we have there include sketchbook, eraser, sharpener. When you do this, you have two marks. Let's move to section one. Let's move to section, section 1B, question 3. State two forms of portrait. You have painting, you have photographs, you have sculpture. State two forms of portrait for two marks. The answers you have painting, photographs, and sculpture. So when you state any two of these, you earn two marks. Okay, we move to section 1B. Possible questions you will find in section 1B. Question one, draw a female portrait and describe your drawing. Draw a female portrait and describe your drawing. So the first part will carry four marks, drawing a female portrait. And the next part, so the answers, let's look at the answer. Okay, you have a female portrait. The female portrait, the drawing is four marks. Draw a female portrait and describe your drawing. So you can have a female portrait like this. You can draw any other female portrait depending on you. Now part two of it is describe your drawing. So you need to describe what you have drawn. Everything you say should be visible on the drawing. Okay, I describe this. Let's describe it together. This is a female portrait. It has a broad face and light complexion. It has long, long black hair, broad lips, painted red, broad eyes, broad eyebrows, large eyes, and ear with yellow earring, flat nose, and long neck. So, this is the description. Just look at the, this is the portrait. So that is what we have described. And when you describe, when you describe, you have two marks. We move to revision question section two. Let's go to section two of our, of our revision. It carries eight marks and is 40% of the exams. Remember section two always begin with a real life situation. 
And from the real life situation, you are given a task which you are expected to solve. Okay, let's read together attentively. The birthday of your manual labor teacher is coming up in a month. You desire to give her a gift, but you don't have money to buy to buy. So you decide to draw and offer her a portrait of herself. We read again. The birthday of your manual labor teacher is coming up in a month. You desire to give her a gift, but you don't have money to buy. So you decide to draw and offer her a portrait of herself. So that is the problem. That is the situation you find yourself in. And how do you get out of it? The first question says, describe the process of drawing and painting a portrait. You have decided to draw and paint a portrait of your manual labor teacher. So how will you go about that? That is what we are uh, expecting here from you. Describe the process of drawing and painting a portrait, which will have will earn you four marks. Okay, this is what you are expected to write. Sketch on a paper. So you begin by sketching. Remember, we say sketching is it it it. it, it looks more at the essence rather than the detail. So you need to first of all capture what you want to, 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 to draw by sketching it down. The next step is you mix your colors. You mix your colors, the color you will have to use. Since you already have an idea of what you want to draw, how your manual labor teacher looks like, and you know the colors you will you need in um, a, bringing out this portrait. So mix the color and put them beside you. Then uh, transfer, after, after the sketch, you transfer the sketch or drawing on a canvas, which means when you sketch on a paper, you draw and then you transfer the drawing or the sketch on a canvas. For you to use a canvas, you must set it on an easel. Then you tone the complexion. I don't know whether your manual teacher is fair in complexion, is dark in complexion, you best know. So you look at the complexion you want to use and then you tone the complexion. Then next you decorate the skin of the face. I don't know if your manual labor teacher is that type who always like to paint, maybe put red lip, or wet lip or black lip, whatever you do it. How does she, how does her face always look like? You put all of those decorations. Maybe she's always putting on a earring. You put, you draw the earring, whatever. So you put the necessary decorations as per what you, you want to, to, to have at the end. And then you paint, you paint per plan of the face. You already know the face. You start, you paint from the forehead, the jaws. You paint to, to resemble or to you paint according to the face of the person you, you intend to uh, draw. And then you move, the last part of it, you enlighten the shadow to mark the reliefs. You enlighten the shadows to mark the relief. That is the last part of the drawing or of the, of the painting. So I take the answer over again. Sketch on a paper, you mix your colors, you transfer the sketch or the drawing on canvas, you tone the complexion, you decorate the skin of the face, you paint per plan of the face, and then you enlighten the shadows to mark the relief. Okay, 
Let's continue. So when you when you give this description, you have it is for four marks. Make sure you do it chronologically. It is supposed to be chronological. The next question, question two. State four ways you can you can care for a portrait. Two marks. State four ways you can care for a portrait. Two marks. Okay. You can care for a portrait by dusting the portrait whenever it is dusting. By keeping it away from children. And keep the portrait in a cold, dry area. You protect the portrait from excessive sunlight. You cover the portrait with a cloth, with a cloth. So any two of these that you write will earn you two marks. So the question again, state four ways you can care for a portrait. This is the expected answer. Dust the portrait, keep away from keep the portrait away from children. Children can they can tear it, they can add um, uh, unwanted uh, drawings on it and which will destroy the portrait. Keep in a cold, dry area and then protect the portrait from excessive sunlight because excessive sunlight can make it fade, it can make your painting to fade. Cover with a cloth that is to protect it, especially when you have to move with it, when you have to travel or you move to move it wherever you want to move it to, you need to cover it with a cloth to protect it. Okay, let's continue question, question three. Question two, give two importance of drawing and painting. Two marks. Give two importance of drawing and painting. Two marks. These are some of the answers you are expecting to write. It develops hand-eye coordination helps to stimulate creative thoughts, it increases observational skills. So any two of these that you write will end you to two marks. You can also talk of develop visual artwork ideas in all mediums. It can help learners to write and think creatively. It can serve as a source of income. It can serve as a source of employment can serve as a form of relaxation and satisfaction. So whichever two of these that you write will earn you two marks. Manetambia niña ne injo biayen 